And welcome everybody to Aussie Car Driving School. I'm Wilco and I'm here today with Ira Felberg who's going to teach you the basics of driving. How are you going, Ira? Yeah, good. Thanks, Wilco. And um, yeah, quick thanks for uh, helping me out, getting this all set up and recording. No problems at all. The people don't want to hear us do chitter chatter though, so let's get right into it. Let's yep. go into step number one. What? How do people become a better driver? All right, so first of all, this episode, yeah, we're basically just going to cover the basics real quick, and then we'll go into other things, other details, more detail in other episodes. So episode one is just covering basic racecraft. So the two best tips I reckon I could give anyone is practice, practice, practice. Um, you generally race how you practice. So if you leave it to the last minute and you don't practice much, your race is probably going to turn out the same way. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how to practice later. But the other main tip I think I could probably give any general racer starting out is to use all the road. It's the most common thing you see people probably do is turning in from not as wide as where they can be, not hitting the apex, and then a shallow exit, so not running out as wide. So we'll talk about that in more detail in this episode as well, um, about markers, where to turn in and all that. But they're the two best tips I can give anyone. It's all about practice and using all the road. As Bocky used to say, make the corners as straight as possible. All right, so let's get into how to practice. Uh, at the start, you don't want to focus on hot lapping. Having a fast lap time is just part of racing. At the start, it tends to be how everyone measures themselves, but really, it's just a part of it. So at the start, I'd tell people really just forget about that. Just try and practice clean sort of thing. Um, yeah, and as I said before, start practicing at least one week before you plan to race because... Uh, it will make a huge difference, especially when you're finding that last second or so. You can get the first 90% down like pretty quick, maybe in a couple of hours, but I guarantee you that last 10% is going to take a few days and a few different conditions. So, yeah, my advice is if you want to go okay, practice at least a week in advance. And obviously practice how you're going to race. So if you're doing officials, how many laps are they? Do those sort of runs. If you're racing Aussie car, we race... 115 minute and a 30 minute so that's what you want to practice so you know your fuel numbers you're basically rehearsing for the race okay so a little bit more detail on lap times like i said you're not going to be fast straight away right those people that come along and they're quick straight away they're just freaks and they're 0.01 percent right most people even the quick people it takes time right now the other thing is to remember is uh i if you're one tenth off the quick guys under brakes and one tenth too slow getting on the accelerator coming off a corner on a 14 turn track, you're going to be 2.8 seconds a lap off the pace. So when you look down and you see that you're three, five seconds off the pace, don't be too disheartened because really you're not that far off. And a lot of people are starting, oh, I'm too far off, five, eight seconds, honestly. It, when you break it down like that, and I think Bathurst is like 16 or 18 turns and some tracks are longer, it's not a lot. So really that's what you're looking for. You're looking for those slow num those low numbers to cut the time off. Now the other thing that I probably should have put at the start, the best tips, is use your delta. In motor racing, right, data is king, right? You think you remember, but you literally won't. And the more you... Get used to using your data to compare your lap times and if you subscribe to VRS or Pure or one of them, even just using like your, the own, uh, the inbuilt iRacing one, which you press tab on a keyboard or allocate a button on your controller for it. You've got to use that all the time, especially in qualifying and practice because you're and trying to improve your own times. Don't worry about what the other cars are doing. Just try and improve yourself. So remember that data is king. Um... And also, your main aim is to finish the race in the least amount of seconds as possible. That's the way you want to think about every race. It's like a slice of time, and you're trying to get to the end in the least amount of seconds. And every time you miss an apex or you shallow exit a corner, that costs you a tiny little bit of time. Now, it literally might only be hundreds or thousands, 
But look back up there, what I said, one-tenth in, one-tenth out on a 14-turn track is 2.8. So if you can iron out those little bits and you can hit your apexes every time, don't get involved in racing the other cars, these kinds of things. It will make a difference to your finishing position. So, yeah, just try and think about it that way. That you're trying to finish the race in the least amount of seconds as possible. All right, spatial awareness is a big thing, especially online racing. So it's something you really got to be aware of. If you're two or three wide, um, then you obviously cannot turn down onto that car, simple as that. And if you're three wide and you're the guy on the outside, then you got to run around the paint on the outside. Uh, the most important thing with that is make sure your spotter is turned on because your spotter will tell you if there's a car inside and if there's an overlap. And I've, you find most of the mistakes get made generally just because people didn't see the car there and the spotter wasn't turned on and side-on contact is made. Uh, passing. Now, simply, quite simply, right, it's up to the car behind to pass clean. Right? That's all there is to it. There's, there's a lot more that we'll go into later about being halfway up the car and all that, but it's literally up to the car behind to make the move on the car ahead and to get past as clean as possible without making contact. Now, having said that, all cars must leave racing room. So what that means is you can't squeeze somebody to the outside of the track and push them off just because you're ahead. Right? In normal racing, real racing, a lot of classes you can do that, but we don't have that kind of vision. Some people are on flat screens or whatever. So you, if there's a car outside you, same thing, you cannot squeeze them. All right, at the start, you want to form good habits because motor racing literally is a habit sport. And one of the biggest tips I can give you with this is the car tends to go where you look. And if you notice next time you get in the session and notice where your eyes go, if you're looking around, reading the messages and all that other stuff, and even when you're driving, if you're looking at things off track or whatever, that's probably going to cost you time, literally. So I literally um, was trained to look. So as soon as I see that apex, I look exactly where I want that car to go. Um, another good habit is don't look in the mirror when cars are close behind. The, the fast guys that are coming up, to, if they're coming up to lap you or whatever, they know what they're doing. They will get past you reasonably. By going offline or slowing down suddenly, that's when you're going to cause problems and get hit. And by looking up and looking away, what it's going to do is you're going to miss that apex that, that you should be looking for. So I only look at my mirrors on straights and stuff like that. And if people are following close behind, especially at the start, if you can get into that habit, resist the urge to look because what you will happen is you'll start picking them up in your periphery and if somebody moves to the left or the right of you you don't have to look at them to know where they are you'll see them move in the mirror so two habits that are good to form at the start um, and just carrying on what i just said there don't slow suddenly letting faster cars pass just hold your line they will get past um, now how you let cars pass will make a difference to your race and your race time what I was saying before about the least amount of seconds. So if it's possible, you want to let these guys pass on the straight. Because if you've got to let them go through a corner complex, you probably are going to have to go wide and go offline, and that's going to cost your race time. So ideally, you want to time it. And sometimes it means, like, if you've got to slow up a little bit to let them get to you on a straight so that it doesn't happen in the corner, you're better off doing that. Because especially somewhere like Bathurst, you can get a toe back up or back down the hill. So pull in behind them, get a toe. And then not only did you not lose time, but you made a little bit of time. Okay, so as soon as you get in practice, if there's quick guys in there in a session, before you even take a lap, I recommend you spend a couple of laps watching the leaders, or the fastest guys, right? So jump in their cockpit view and just ride along. Now, you might not be able to break where they break, and you might not be able to carry the same speed as them, but it's going to give you a rough idea for markers where to break roughly what a lap looks like okay they're carrying third gear through there or whatever now another good tip as well when i'm talking about watching is watch real life streamers because even the slow ones right you can learn something off and the good ones you can learn a lot off and if you if you want to take your racing semi-seriously 
yeah, I recommend that you get online and look up a few streamers that are racing the cars that are your racing and yeah watch a few streams you know um and especially the quick guys like you'll be amazed what you can learn picking up you know from their habits um when you do start practicing okay on an outlap here's what i recommend right on that outlap or if you practice by yourself with no other cars in the session is normally how i do it at the start i drive around slowly right but i put the car exactly exactly where i want it to go i don't muck around on outlaps and what i'm doing is i'm actually looking at my markers and and this is where it comes down back to using all the road right so i'm looking how wide can i actually be not doing it at speed so i'm just going slow how wide can i actually be before i turn in right and then what um i should have added in that one is when you look, and I do have it on a tile further down, but I should have had it here. When you look, right, don't look um, for your markers at where the wheel should be. Look at where the nose should be, right? So if the wheel can be, like, off the curb, when you go to, say, hit an apex and the wheel should be, like, right up against that curb, you don't want your eyes deviating off to that wheel. So in Instead of when you learn your markers, instead of looking where the wheel is, look where the nose cone is. So if the nose cone is like one uh, foot inside the curb or on the white line, then that's that's exactly where you want to look. So jumping ahead there a bit, but yeah, we'll get to setups. So basically, I can tell you straight up, right? There's no secret golden setup that's quicker than everything else. There's ones that work better than everything else, of course. But different setups suit different drivers and this is where it comes back to using your data to find out what works because literally what makes one person quick won't make another person mark scape was notorious in v8s he used to run so soft super settings he would be hooking up like on three wheels half the time and it was like a it was like a rain setup so that worked for him obviously he did very, very well the other bit of advice i can give you is don't run the same setup all the time uh, have a bit of a play around, you know, feel what it does to the car, what difference it makes. If you run the same setup all the time, you're not going to learn anything. Okay, coming down to a bit of specifics now for the skippy drivers with the setups. Long story short, you want to just run the lowest pressures possible. Um, the reason that is, is it takes longer for them to come up to temp, but when they do, they stay flatter, so you have more contact patch. If you pump them up, you can get the temperature up quicker, but you get a rounding off on the tyre. And you can look at your data as well. It will tell you the inside, middle and outside temperature. And just remember as well, they take a good two to four laps, depending on the length of the track, to come up to temp. So no pushing hard at the start. Just you want to slowly work your way into it. Okay, talking about the springs, basically with the SPO, the lower the number, the more it raises the right height. Um, and you basically want to run the lowest ride height in a race car you can, but get away with. Now, there's two things that affect this. Lots of high-speed corners and high-built curbs. Some tracks have lots of them, some tracks don't. So as a general rule, you probably want to run the lowest ride height you can, which is around four or five. But if there's lots of high-speed corners, you want to start knocking that number down to soften it up so the car's got more movement and it'll be more stable. You can get through the high speed stuff quick with a stiffer setting, but it's gonna be a lot unstable and the chance of making mistakes becomes a lot higher. Can I also so, jump in there as well? There are tracks where you will damage your car having it too low. So watch for yes. a place if you're getting a broken wing, that will be way worse than having a little bit higher ride height because you'll go slower down the straights. Yeah, and that's where the high curbs kicks in. If if there's tracks where you're smashing the curbs a lot, well, what we'll go ahead. You just got to raise the car up. It's going to give you away a little bit of time in the straight, but it's going to protect. So the ARB is the only other adjustment on the skippy. One is the softest setting, and eight is the stiffest. So the way to think about it basically is stiffer gives you more grip, and it turns in better but it'll also give you more oversteer. So what I was saying about the car being a bit more unstable, 
So tracks with lots of, you want to run as stiff as you can, but same thing. If there's a lot of high speed or you're braking when you're turning kind of corners, then you want to just start dropping that number down and you just keep going down until you feel like the car feels okay. All right, Skippy brakes. So anything to 50% on that adjustment there in your garage is going to the front and above 50 is obviously to the rear. Uh, a lower percentage is less stable, um, but you but you can brake later. And a higher bias is more stable, but you're also uh, more likely to lock the, 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 the wheel. So most people run somewhere between about 54 and 56 percent there's a few tracks maybe where the quick guys run a bit more or less than that um and same thing you just play around it but that's a rough guide around 54 56 percent all right cornering um especially with the skippy and the v the biggest tip is turn in early the most likely mistake you're going to make cornering is missing the apex and running wide so if you turn in early and as, as i said before look at the point where you want that nose cone to be you're more likely to be able to do that uh lap after lap and that's where i've got here aim with the nose not with the wheel which i already explained but yeah when you're doing your out lap put the wheel where you want it to be but look at the nose cone you'll find a small tip will make a big difference so the most common mistake obviously with the skippy is losing the rears when turning in and now seems to be same with the v as well so to explain what's happening here basically as you approach a corner you come off the throttle so and if you're approaching mid corner the balance of the car is not 50 50 because you are still slowing down so all the weight is shifted transferred to the front of the car and you can watch this physically on your replays and what that does is it lifts the rears up slightly less weight actually physically gives you less contact patch on those rear tires now if you combine that with a downshift too early you get a like a compression lockup effect which is like putting the handbrake on slightly and these things combined is the most common mistake that most people make in these cars so what do we want to know we want to know how to fix it and the solution basically is you want to be getting back on the throttle before the apex and drive out through the corner because as soon as you start feeling that you're losing the rears if you get back on the throttle the weight is transferred back to the back of the car so the technique is not to get down there and brake as late as you can and try to make the apex because yeah the if you're braking as late as you can the back of the car's coming up it's more like a brake wash your speed off and then as you turn sort of as you turn it in back on the accelerator and punching through the corner because especially with the v's i've noticed you really want to be slicing the apexes off late and the theory is basically you give away a little bit going in to gain a lot coming out because the run onto the straight they don't have a lot of power so the run onto the straight is is it makes a big difference in those cars and um that's about it okay so that's just covered the basics i hope there was a few good tips in there for people and um, we'll post this up and feel free to come in the discord drivers if you've got any questions about any of that and then uh, next week we'll probably go start going into some of these things into a bit more detail yeah definitely uh, definitely use all the track that's the one thing i noticed i did to the point where you are dangerously breaking on grass uh, because it makes that corner a lot easier and definitely um, accelerating as early as you can but safely uh, that'll make both the v and the skippy go a lot quicker for you overall but yeah just keep stay consistent as he said that every single second that you you muck up during the race is a second further down the field you finish at the end of the race so yeah be consistent thank you ira for your time mate we will be back next week with another episode and yeah have fun everyone bye for now